Welcome back. So, as you can tell from the short sleeves, spring is pretty much upon us, even though it's March. Um, the last couple of days have been in the high 70s, even 80 degrees. So, the weather's been wonderful. And hopefully, it'll keep up. So, today we are going to continue with the shopping trip from yesterday. And I let yesterday's video get a little long, so I'm going to make every effort to sort of keep this in that half hour or so limit. I try. Not always successful, but I try. And as yesterday, in terms of price and items, it's a really mixed bag. Um, yesterday, I believe the lowest priced item was a dollar. And uh, the highest priced item I showed you, even though it didn't come home with me, was that $18 teapot. So it's pretty much the same today. Some very low priced items and some higher priced items. All right, so we will get into it when we come back. We are starting off today on the second floor of Bedford, and the area of the second floor landing as you get off the stairs, the area that you would ordinarily consider to be a hallway, is one of Paul's cubbies. Um, they're all over the place on the second floor. Cubbies, alcoves, bookcases, cabinets, everywhere. So this is... Uh, uh, the area is entirely his on that uh, landing hallway. And uh, I found my first piece quite by accident because I was not looking through the cabinets. But knowing Paul, I should have been. So here we go. I untied my sneaker accidentally in front of one of Paul's cubbies. So while I was down there tying my sneaker, I decided to look around, glad I did, because we have an adorable little sleeping cat. Uh, this is a Japan piece, 250. Oh my goodness, yes, there are far too many cat lovers out there to think this won't easily find a home. I will always pick up cats when I can because people like cats. And a little cat like that for $2.50 is something that's going to be very easy to sell because uh, the fact that it is relatively small and light means it will go out with free shipping. The fact that it cost me $2.50 means I can move it out at a very reasonable price. And like I say, people love cats. So, whenever I see attractive little cat stuff, I usually pick it up. And so, that was no exception. It's just unfortunate that it took having to retie my sneakers for me to get down into the bottom of that cabinet to look for it. Um, after that, I walked through to the main area. This is... Um, this is a hallway that I was in, and as I say, it's the landing. Walked into the main area where all the booths are, and the first area you come to is still Paul and Paul's things. So I saw something there that I did not pick up. I, I absolutely would have if it had just been a little less expensive, but worth looking at anyway. So here you go. Okay, let's take a look at this. This is in one of Paul's alcoves. It is a wonderful little turkey butter dish with fall leaves. 
it, this is a perfect Thanksgiving piece. Price is $14. Let me pick it up and turn it over so you can see. That little foil sticker comes from Napco. And Napco was one of the popular mid-century Japanese import companies. Piece is great, but the price tag, mm, a little high for me. So I think I'm going to have to leave it behind. Someone will come along uh, who is perfectly willing to pay retail for that. And I think that would be a good deal at $14. But it's just a good deal isn't always a good deal for me or for you. But lovely, lovely piece. Well worth the money. Just not coming home with me. Holiday items like that are always a good investment because if you could afford to take the money out of your general reselling shopping budget to grab items you know will be popular later on in the year, it's always a good idea to do it. Um, a piece like that little turkey butter dish, obviously it's a Thanksgiving piece. And it's a very good Thanksgiving piece because interestingly enough, butter dishes are the sort of things that people tend not to have as part of their uh, holiday china. So uh, when you have a butter dish, it's very often part of your regular china service, but the good china very often doesn't have a butter dish. Now, obviously, that's not true in all cases. Some very nice china services do come with butter dishes. A lot of the very good china services come with butter plates, individual butter plates, rather than the large community, you know, slab of butter dish. So, that's often the sort of thing that people will pick up their Thanksgiving butter dish, their Easter butter dish, their Christmas butter dish that comes out with individual holidays. And as a result, sometimes you will find that very specialized pieces like that are very easy sells. So I have to consider that if it's there the next time I'm at Bedford, Maybe it will come home with me after all. Although I also have to say, it's probably not going to be there. Because although I thought $14 was a high price for resale, for retail, in other words, to buy it for yourself, no. Very, very reasonable price. And most of the people who shop at Bedford are not shopping for resale. Um, and we've discussed this. A lot of people will not shop for resale at antique stores because they don't think there are enough deals to make it worth their while. And I think there are plenty of deals. You just have to know what you're looking for. So I think most of Bedford's customers are retail customers rather than resellers. So my suspicion is that little turkey butter dish is not going to be there when I go back. Next thing up, as I was wandering around, I just couldn't resist showing you this. So let's take a look. Well, I guess you have to be a fisherman or fisherwoman to see the appeal in this. This is apparently a desiccated and mounted fish with its mouth open. I have to say, I've never seen anything like that. I have seen fish mounted with the whole body sort of flowing sideways across a plaque, but this giant fish head trying to bite you and mounted like a deer head, this is brand new to me. My goodness. Oh my. Those fish heads. 
they just look like they're about to come right out and bite you. I have seen mounted fish before. I, I grew up in New England. People fish there. They have all kinds of dead fish on their walls. I've just never seen heads of fish mounted like heads of deer looking like they're going to bite you. So I thought I would share that with you mostly because it took me by surprise. For some of you, this may be common. I do not know if this is like a common thing and I've just never seen it before, but my goodness. And I do have to say, I, I found it interesting in a sort of quirky way, not the sort of thing I would want in my own home, but I can absolutely get the humor of putting something like that on your wall. I didn't get the prices, by the way, because that is not the sort of thing that that I sell. But uh, like I say, I, I can appreciate the humor of putting something like that in your home. Not in my home, though. So next up, these are pieces, and I filmed three of them together, pieces that um, I got from Paul's various little cubbies. And I picked them up, wandered around with them in my hands until I could find a spot to set them down and film. Because one of the things about the way Paul has his things organized or not organized is sometimes I really have to scramble to find a good place to film them so that you can see them. And very often I end up going to the booth of another dealer in order to sort of lay the pieces out so you can see them. This time, actually, I went over to one of Paul's cabinets. So let's take a look at what I found there. Well, I have been wandering around Paul's cubbies, just grabbing things and taking them with me. Uh, hoping to find a nice spot where I could set them down and film them. So let's start with this piece. This is a Japan-marked bowl. It's a rice bowl. Uh, lovely design. Beautiful crazing. The age of this piece is obvious, and the fact that someone used this. Um, price on this is... Uh, two fifty. Yes, absolutely, it's coming with me. And then I found this piece. There's our price hair receiver. Japan. So we've got ten dollars on this. Very, very nice piece. Glad to get it. Okay, still with Paul's pieces. Let me show you this one. This is an incredible wall pocket. Uh, $19.99. I could not, frankly, I, I wouldn't be able to buy this for resale because the price, um, the price is just too high even to cover things like shipping and material costs. But it's gorgeous, and it is coming home with me. And who knows? Um, I really, I'm not sure what I'm going to do with it. I just know it's gorgeous, and I'm not leaving it behind. But as for my Etsy shop, I would have to sell something like this for at least $30 to break even. And I just don't know if I could get that much for it, no matter how pretty it is. I'd pay $30 for it. Not sure anybody else would. So the rice bowl was really, really nice. That's a sweet little piece. Very glad to have gotten it. Uh, $2.50. And that's an old piece. So pleased with that. The hair receiver... As I've mentioned before, I, I do a lot of business in hair receivers. 
People like them. I like them. I have no problem saying to myself, oh, look, a hair receiver. Maybe I'll keep it because I use it to keep little fragrance beads or in the pre-fragrance beads days, I would use it for pot potpourri and just, you know, a little bit of sweet smelling stuff in a very decorative little container because in general, potpourri and fragrance bead containers are, um, they're, they're not, well, they're not vintage, they're not antique, they're not inspired. You go to the store, you know, the nicest ones you can get are virtually identical to the ones that you pick up at the dollar store or Walmart. Nobody seems to be putting any time or effort into designing little containers like this. So for me, hair receivers are perfect for this. And as I say, they sell very well for me, so I'm always glad to get them. My cutoff price for hair receivers is $10. Ordinarily, I can get almost anything. Um, beautiful antique Nippon hair receivers, um, uh, Bavarian or Czech lusterware hair receivers, all of them are in the $10 range tops. And this is because they are antiquated items. And by that, I don't just mean antique because they're old. I mean antiquated because we're no longer sticking hair in them. And most people have a lot of trouble crawling out of that box and saying, what can I use this for? Well, as I say, for me, potpourri, fragrance beads, Anything that you want to contain, but you would like some opening so that the fragrance can escape or so that you can get in and out of it quickly without having to remove the lid, I guess. Um, so I'm delighted with them. And I was very glad to get that one because I believe I picked up three hair receivers on this particular outing. Um, but we're going back to this piece. 1999, so I'm going to call it $20. I bought this because I thought it was gorgeous. Now, realistically speaking, and we can take a minute and talk about this if you don't mind, is that a sensible resale purchase? And the answer is no. A piece like this, um, I've put $20 into it. Let me show you this because I don't know if you can see. I'm going to try to get this. So around the hole, there is some chipping. So that's not a big deal to fix. What I'm going to do is I'm going to glue a, a metal washer on the back, line the top of the hole of the washer up with the top of the hole, uh, the hanging hole, and then on the inside, because the inside is possibly visible, I will be putting a, um, a heavy plastic washer, which will be white, gluing it on the inside, because I don't want to see this going on uh, a nail or a hook and making the damage any worse. The damage doesn't trouble me because it's totally invisible damage. It's on the back of the piece. The back will be up against a wall. Not a problem. But in addition to my $20 cost for the piece, I have the cost of the two washers. Not a significant cost. Less than a dollar for the combined total. The labor of gluing them not significant either. How much work does it take to glue a washer onto a piece of porcelain? But listing it in my Etsy shop, there are uh, listing fees with Etsy. Um, they get a fee for listing. They get a fee for the sale. Then there is a fee taken out for the payment. 
So there are fees there. In general, it's about 8%. Um, there would also be packing and shipping. This piece weighs a little less than eight ounces. And I send out first class items, always free shipping. But the packed weight on this will be about 15 ounces. And then all of the packing materials, the boxes, etc., whatever. And by the time I am through with all of that, my costs are probably going to be, well, depending on the shipping, but I have to estimate that in advance. If a piece like that goes to Texas, it's going to be about six fifty, give or take. Plus, because it's over $20, I will insure it. So you throw another dollar on that. All things considered, there's going to be about $10 additionally in my costs. So I look at this $20 plus another 10. So my cost $30, which is the least I can list this for. And at that point, I'm only breaking even. So if I were to put five or $10 on this, would someone pay 35 or $40 for it? And I don't know. And I would because I like it. At that point, it's, it's getting pricey. It's getting to the point where I'm, I'm not feeling competitive in my prices. Usually I can keep my prices quite low because I buy at low prices and because there is enough of a markup in some things to offset a lower markup on others. So, for example, I can pick up salt and pepper shakers for $3, and sometimes I can sell them for as much as 20 which will allow me to go out, pick up something else for $10 or $15, and sell it for 18 you know, where I'm, like, making a dollar on it. So... Overall, that's the sort of mental strategy and the process that I go through when I decide on that. So that may not see my Etsy shop. It's really a question of how many people do I think are going to like it as much as I do? How many people are going to like it enough to pay $40 for it? I like it. I would. Um, but on that vein, let me show you one of my most recent personal acquisitions. This is a Chinese bowl. This is a particular style of bowl that this uh, sort of turquoise, I'm not sure if you can see, this is not blue. It's actually turquoise. So I don't know if the color is showing up properly on uh, the screen. And, of course, it has designs on the outside. It's antique. This is a kind of Chinese bowl that would have been used in a Chinese household. Not elegant export china, although this is an export piece. It has the china mark on it. That also dates it for us because we know China, 1890 to 1919. Therefore, it's at least 100 years old. Um, I happen to like these bowls. Um, my dog my dog passed away a year ago last Halloween. Audie is still looking for her, sadly. Her bowls were a style like this. And although the dog is gone, the bowls are still in place because I don't want to upset Audie. And he always drank his water from her bowl. He stole it. No matter how much water I put out for the cat, the cat stole from the dog. Doesn't matter. Cat didn't like the dog food, still stole the dog food. It's just siblings. What are you going to do? This is actually Audie's Christmas present, assuming he is a good boy. It's okay. He's in the other room. He's not going to see. And I'll be able to put it away before he wakes up. Um, this 
was, um, I think it was $37 they were asking on eBay. I offered $35. They accepted $12 shipping. So it came in at around $50. Um, I got no problem paying for that because I like it. I want it for myself. And also I know what this type of porcelain costs ordinarily. And it's still a good deal, even at $50, because there is no damage on the rim. The rims on these got chewed up very easily because, as I say, they were knocked around households. Very pleased with this. So for me, that made sense. That would not make the least bit of sense if I were buying that for resale. So I'm just throwing that out there because the fact is that you, you have to be extremely practical in your resale purchases. If I didn't like this little bird wall pocket so much, and if that green didn't look so nice against my little Ezra stove, I probably wouldn't have gotten it. But something like this, because I like it, will probably just stay for me. And remember, when you are out shopping for resale, if you find things you like, you can afford them, hey, you know, there's no law saying you can't do a little of your own shopping at the same time. It's just that you have to be practical. For me, this was not a practical resale purchase. Not at all. It's a practical purchase for me to keep for myself, yes, but if, if I were to throw that in my Etsy shop with a $40 price tag, it would probably still be there a year from now because I'm just not sure anybody else would be all that interested in buying it at the price I would have to charge. So, throwing that out there because... I know a lot of you buy for resale, but I know also a lot of you buy just for yourselves. And if you love it and you can afford it and, and you get a good deal on it, I, mean, I still want you to get a good deal on it, then go buy it. Hey, you know, that's what life is all about. So that was just what happened with that piece. I think that is just a piece for me. And that happens every once in a while. I do see something. I have it in my head that this is a resale piece. But when I actually take a look at the dollars and cents, I realize the only way I can sell it is at a loss. All right. One last and we're going to go. This was the pig booth. And for those of you who have not tuned in before, Pig booth is, that is not, I don't mean that in any disparaging way. There is a booth on the second floor of Bedford that has a lot of little pigs in it. That's just what they do, pigs here and there. Um, I've gotten many of their pigs. Their pigs are adorable. And I just think of it as the pig booth, and they have a lot of interesting things in there. So I did find a nice, interesting piece this time. And it was considerably less than the $20 for that wall pocket. Well, it looks like the pig booth has sucked me in yet again. Beautiful little green and tan cafe au lait. I'm not sure what this color combination is. I'm going to say green and tan. It's a sponge wear bowl, $4. Oh yes, don't mind if I do. Yeah, $4 for a little sponge wear bowl. It's things like that because they are small and because they can be used for everything. That can be somebody's granddaughter's breakfast cereal bowl. Here, Mima has a dedicated bowl for your cereal. Look, um, which I think, by the way, is a great thing to do because it's memory making. Uh, you can use it for cooking. You can eat out of it. You can use it for decoration. Um, 
spongeware especially, that sort of thing. Throw potpourri in it. That's going to be perfectly at home in an American country house. Great. And the price is really good. Now, we have a lot of spongeware in our area. Rural Pennsylvania and spongeware was a type of porcelain that was... I don't want to say, it's almost like there's no term I can come up with that doesn't sound like I'm, you know, casting shade on spongeware. It, but that's not it. It was a little less sophisticated, so it's not city pieces. These were for the kitchen, not for the dining room. And because of where we are located, we have a lot of pieces like that. A rural life meant no formal dining rooms, no fancy dinner parties. So a lot of the china and porcelain we see in this area is very utilitarian. Now, I love that stuff. To me, you find a really beautiful decorative little bowl like that. Mm, yummy. Um, but at the time, it was not considered high-end. It's still not considered high-end, frankly, but I think there's great beauty in it. So, um, and I'm not the only one, by the way. It's not just, you know, me and my foolish opinions. People now are coming to recognize the beauty in, in simple utilitarian pieces like this. So I was glad to get that one, especially at a price that means I can sell it at a reasonable price. So, all right, um, we are going to get back together tomorrow for Project Sunday. In the meantime, I am going to try, fingers crossed, I'm going to show you another um, of the Brown Haven photography slideshows, but I'm hoping to make up a new one for you. So it's either going to be a new one or you're going to get one of the, the ones that I've already shown. And as I've mentioned, um, this is my friend Liz, who is also my Avon lady. She does beautiful photography work. And by the way, one of these days, I am going to have to, to just see if I can get some pictures from her of her lovely daughter, Gray. Gray is a cosplayer. And we've talked about this before. So I'm sure she has tons of pictures of gray in in steampunk and goth outfits and enough of you have expressed interest in what this whole cosplay thing is about maybe you'd be interested in a slideshow featuring gray and if you are i'll ask her mom maybe we can work something out and show you what it's like and gray is a beautiful young girl very photogenic so it won't be hard to look at her all right anyway brown haven hopefully a new one if not one of the ones I've already shown. And tomorrow, Project Sunday. All right, see you then. Mm -hmm.